But where are you really from? A podcast about the Asian American struggle. Hey everyone, I'm Angela Lin, and I'm Jesse Lin, and welcome back to "But Where Are You Really From?" Today is Thanksgiving, or is it the day? Anyways, it's Thanksgiving weekend, and we felt like it was an important episode to talk about all the things that we're grateful for uh, today and this year in general. But before we can even get into the right mindset to be grateful for anything, I think we need to just we owe it to ourselves to bitch fest a little bit about the shit show that 2020 was. Well, obviously the biggest thing that every that's on everybody's mind is COVID as a result of that. And everyone being like at home and stuff, everything has just gotten like much harder. Like Mm -hmm. working with people is much harder. It's like a drag on the soul sometimes Uh, like to just like try to be patient in your communication and like understanding and all this crap. And I'm like, I don't have an ounce of patience left for myself, let alone anybody else that I talk to. So I feel like there's a, there are two sides to the working from home, like interpersonal relationships piece of it, because I kind of feel like, like, would you be less annoyed in the office with these people? Cause I feel like there's some intolerance in general of some dumb behavior across the board, regardless of the format that it's happening in. Because for me, the like productivity, it kind of depends on the team and like the efficiency and communication depends on the team. Like my team's pretty good about just like being super transparent about what's happening, what you need and like being on top of your shit. But I can see how if you like don't trust your team or they're not really reliable and then they are hard to get a hold of, then I guess... That would suck. Yeah, I just mean like in an office, I can normally bitch someone out loudly <laughs> <laughs> because they don't like, like some people don't sit in the office. So I'm like, I could just be like, blah, 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 and like commiserate with people. Uh, you miss the water cooler stuff. Well, I'm grateful. I'm going to move into a grateful, but we'll jump back to commiserating. But since we're on the topic of working, I'm grateful for being off camera for the majority of my calls <laughs> since quarantine. I think we like we had a wave where everyone in the company the first two months was like all camera all the time so that we can feel <laughs> like we're still a community. And then after a while, everyone just like one by one, every camera started turning <laughs> off. And we're like, forget this. I want to be in my PJs. I don't want to deal with this. And I'm grateful that <laughs> that ended up happening because my like side eye and like resting bitch oh, yeah. face is a lot mm-hmm. to handle for a lot of people. And mm-hmm. like most of my coworkers don't know much about it right now because they haven't had to see it. I had it turned on the other day and my coworker screenshot me and she was like, oh girl, I'm like, this is what I look like all the time. You just oh, don't know. <laughs> well, I think that that's one of the things that I'm talking about that's missing because like once you're away from people for a while your like mannerisms or idiosyncrasies like what you're talking about I would be like oh that's just Angela being Angela like in real life but then like after a while I'm like are you just like are you just shitting on me right now like I can't tell (laughs) anymore right like that's true so it's the same thing where you're just like talking to me to other people I'm like wait like are you being sincere here or are you being like sarcastic and then I'm like, yeah. if you're being sarcastic, it's very rude. Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Just like a full thing. Well, in general, I feel like this pandemic is, has fucked with everyone's like social abilities. Because we're oh, like yeah. not used to being around humans anymore. Like I can't yeah. really fathom the next like party I I will be going to. There is a bridal shower that oh, um, I will be going to soon. And... I don't know any of the people besides the bride. So I'm going to be like extra, extra awkward plus mask on awkward. Well, I started trialing out going back to the gym recently and literally like the first handshake that I've ever given up, like since this, I made it at the gym and then I was like sweating about it because I, I was, it was like such an, like, I didn't know what to do. 
like so like i was sharing something with someone and we were like walking away swapping you know so i was like you know i was done with my thing and i was like thank you for being so cool and like keeping your distance while i'm doing my stuff and swapping and then the like guy introduced himself and like held out his hand oh, no. to shake it and i was like i don't know what to do like <laughs> oh boy and then I just, like, I did it because I was, like, I don't want to be, like, super rude. But then immediately afterwards, I ran over to, like, the yeah. sanitizing station. And I was, like, <laughs> Oh, my God. Yeah. But it's going to be like that for a while where you're, like, wait. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if I should, like, uh-oh. Well, okay. Let's talk about, you know, let's talk about some of the things that we do appreciate in 2020. Because I think with all of the bad things that have come up, it's also highlighted a lot of things that are good in our lives that maybe like we just didn't notice or appreciate because there's just like so, you know, before there was just so much stuff happening and it's really hard to slow down and evaluate your life as it is to try to like pick out the things that are good about it. So I think I will start and say like this year, I am grateful for the additional time at home that coronavirus has given me because now I'm like, I feel more comfortable being by myself and not feeling down that I'm not around other people and I can spend quality time with Juniper (laughs) and watching TV and just, you know, doing all the little things that I was doing before. But now instead of doing it out of like, desperation or boredom I'm actually just kind of like okay I'm like enjoying this time by myself doing whatever it is that I'm doing yeah well extroverts got hit real hard by quarantine I feel like you're on the you're definitely more on the extroversion side than introversion side I feel like for me I've always been more of the like in the middle so the ambivert or whatever but as I've gotten older, I've gotten more introverted. Like, I enjoy being with people and I can bring a lot of energy when I'm with people and, like, get a lot of energy from them, but kind of in smaller doses. So, like, as I've gotten older, I've definitely appreciated more, like, me time. And so with quarantine, I'm like, okay, is a me time. <laughs> like, <laughs> and it's been, I think I talked a little bit about about this the last time but like I really appreciate the like reconfiguring of what time looks like for me of like what does 24 hours really give me and like how much can I do that I want to do within that time because I feel like before especially going to work every day and you're like exhausted from like you have to like commute to work and then like do the work and then come back and commute again right it by the time I get home I'm like I just want to like eat and like turn my brain off and just do Netflix or whatever right like and then go to sleep there's not a lot of time that I put into thinking of like you know, what are my hours of the day that I can do shit with? Now that I'm home, I can better utilize that time and like use it for shit I want to do, like learn new things or like work on this podcast or whatever. And I just feel so much more productive with my time and like more um, fulfilled with my day because Hmm. I feel like, oh, I got to like check off many things that were like different parts of my life that I wanted to accomplish and like progress a little bit versus feeling like my entire, you know, productive block of the day has been utilized for this one thing and and I have nothing left. I completely agree with you there. I mean, I I mean, obviously this is like not something that I probably would have like this podcast is probably not something I probably would have taken on like in a normal, Mm -hmm. normal work situation, because it would have just been like impossible, as you mentioned, like with the commute, and then like, you already have your own routines. And then you're like locked at work for the specific amount of time you're supposed to be at work, quote unquote, it would have been quite difficult. I think the other I mean, we're talking about like, people and schedule and time. I think the other thing that I've appreciated more is like, the remaining people that I hang out with and when I do hang out with them it's like much not nicer but like I feel more excited because you're like your engagements with people are so few and far in between that I'm like oh my god I will sit with you (laughs) 
six feet apart outdoors in the rain, and it will be fun <laughs> somehow. Yes. Lols. Yeah. No, I agree. I, I, I do feel like before, and like you still live in New York, but I definitely felt this in New York of like the FOMO, the constant FOMO, right? Where you're the like, FOMO, I just yeah. have to fill every minute of my time doing something so that I don't feel left out of like not doing stuff. And that's definitely decreased for me after moving away from New York. And then I went to business school and then FOMO came again. But like now, you know, past business school as an adult, <laughs> outside of that context, I that the FOMO has not been strong, but I still do feel like I had more things on my social calendar than I like needed to have because there's like a mutual thing amongst the friends of like, I, I should be seeing people and like, I should be spending time with people, I guess. So mm -hmm. I agree with you. Like now when most of the time is you don't see people, like when you do see someone, it does feel like, oh, I like very appreciate our friendship. I like you have mm -hmm. like a deeper conversation and like it's a it's just like a more meaningful hangout usually. Um, mm -hmm. And I'll also add even beyond the like in-person stuff. Um, I think we've talked about this before, but like the amount of like FaceTiming and Zoom calls that everyone's having to like check in with friends that maybe you haven't talked to in a long time. That's mm -hmm. also been something that's been really cool too, is like mm -hmm. you, uh, these have to be inherently like more meaningful conversations. Cause it's not like you're like happen to catch up with them at a party where there are like 30 other people. And like you say, you spend 10 minutes talking to them in passing kind of thing. It's like, I, intent i had intent to like set up a time to video call you it's just you and me or like it's just us mm -hmm. and like a few you know small group of people and there's nothing to do or distract us but to talk to each other and so yeah i think the relationships that are there for sure are much deeper well we talked about COVID at the beginning of this i think we at least for the two of us were i i'm really grateful that i that nothing has happened in terms of like, I haven't caught COVID as far as I'm aware. And in general, I still don't know anyone that has gotten it, um, which I'm thankful for as well. Um, I think this is a really big one because I feel like a lot of the, like the idea, like stuff around health is always like really taking, like you, you take it for granted because you, you know, for us, we're kind of young. So we're like, Oh, like it's going to be fine. And we're never going to have any serious problems. And also we're like gainfully employed. So we have like insurance and all this stuff. But I feel like when you look at what you're seeing for other people, it becomes very clear. Like that's not the case for everyone. So I'm very thankful for the fact that I am able to stay healthy. And even if I wasn't, that I would be able to, you know, see a doctor and get care and all that. I agree. I mean, it, yeah, when you compare it to people who have suffered like really dire consequences from COVID. It is very scary to see what the pen like what the potential is of this virus. For me, it's thinking about our parents too. That's like that was a scary yeah. thing to think about. And my parents are actually in Taiwan right now. Um that was really scary because I'm like, you have to like take a 13 hour flight, international flight, and like Taiwan is way safer than it is in the u.s from a COVID standpoint but you have to like get there <laughs> and yeah. luckily they, they got there um they're in the quarantine right now they have to quarantine because they're the danger <laughs> um mm -hmm. but but then they'll be safer there but like yeah elderly parents right it's like as you get older you're like man there's like very little i can do to protect them well speaking of health and time i think this time has also given me more of a push to like invest in myself self-health from both a mind and body mm -hmm. perspective i just had a conversation with my mom basically and she was like you have to start taking like better care of yourself and you know your your mom always tells you that like, through the years you're like okay yeah whatever okay yeah whatever and now i'm like hmm <laughs> i'm almost 30 and my foot is in a boot i think i should take her more That's seriously true. this time your body is falling I look, apart. She, she told me that and i was like oh i'm 
can I can keep pretending that I'm 21, but in reality, I'm not. Goals. So, but this time I have I have spent it investing in like improving my mental health. So I've been like trying to practice at least like daily or every other day using the Calm Meditation app and trying to use that to like restructure my thinking and the way that I react to certain situations at like work or just with other people in general. And I think it has been really helpful because like before I felt like I had a really good handle on how I was feeling because I was like, okay, I can like very clearly analyze all of these things and come to a logical conclusion. But what the practice has taught me basically is that it's not about like stuff making sense. It's about processing the emotion behind mm. it. So it's like less about thinking and trying to manage the thinking, but more about managing how you feel mm. about it. And so that has been like super helpful because a lot of the times I would get, you know, before I would get to a conclusion where I'm like, I shouldn't be upset. This is stupid. But then I would be like, I'm really fucking upset still. <laughs> like, it won't go away. <laughs> so now it's like, I kind of get it more where it's like, I can come to the logical conclusion and I can try to like pass, let the emotion pass through me. So I also feel better about it as well. Nice. Yeah, I have not been good about the meditation stuff, but what you've been talking about does remind me that I have also been investing in my mental health because it's during quarantine that I called up my old therapist and I was like, can we restart our sessions? <laughs> Cause before, the Oakland yeah, lady. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, oh, nice. I told you previously that like I stopped seeing her because she moved too far and it was like, mm-hmm. you know, just not logical that I can make the logistically the trip over to her every time. And now that everything has to be video, it's like, hey, we can do this. This is like what everyone else has to do if they want to see you. So, um, yeah, I've been doing biweekly sessions with her. And and like also then when I have like emotional meltdowns at certain times, I'm like, uh, if I text her, can you please see me tomorrow still? Like she'll she'll make it work. So it's been a really Mm -hmm. nice like rock to have is our sessions. And sometimes I feel like – Like, there's so much that happens during the pandemic that, like, usually when I see her, there's something top of mind. But even the, like, few times where I'm like, do I have anything to talk with her about? Like, we find the thing. Then you can, like, go deeper on just, like, we all have so many issues, right? So, like, then we can go deeper on, like, just the other issues you have in your life. Not the, like, most immediate Uh things screaming at you because something happened the other day. Um, So, yeah. That's been really cool. Um, And to bring it into the woo-woo since we love that space. Um, Yes. So she she uses, like, in our talk therapy sessions, like, obviously she, like, talks me through a lot of the stuff. But if I'm feeling, like, really emotionally overwhelmed by a certain thing, she will often have me go inward. And, like, there, there is a type of, like, meditation in our sessions Mm -hmm. um and i will like visualize things but unprompted so it's been really cool i've like found i have like a visualization Mm. skill i guess that like comes with my emotions and like processing them so i'll be like really angry or like really sad about something i should be like let's close our eyes turn inward and like just feel into it and like what do you notice and then it yeah it's been Mm -hmm. like pretty random i didn't know i had this ability but it's just like a lot of the times when we do that i like see see things where i'm like well i'm seeing like a like an eagle it's like trying to like furiously fly towards a certain thing it's like okay let's follow this eagle like where's it taking me what is it trying to do and like yeah it's pretty cool i'm like is this just like a live dream that i'm playing out what's happening because it you know it is like related it's like a symbolic representation of whatever the fuck I'm trying to work through. Well, you touched on this, but another thing I'm grateful for is, is this podcast. And like, I'm grateful for the, like the unexpected community that we found with this, not just like there's 
couple different groups of community, right? Like we have our listener community, obviously, that's made up of like some of our friends that started listening mm-hmm, and then just like mm-hmm. random other people who this topic interests them. And like, that's been really cool to see yeah. just like people we don't know who are like, this is like exactly my struggle too. And this is cool to hear. Um, so that's a cool community. And then the other is this like, we're, I think we mentioned a few times, but we're in this Asian podcast network group um on facebook and there are a lot of podcasters that are out there and like we've talked Mm -hmm. about the lack of media representation of our people and it's been really cool to see like there's a huge group of asian americans asian british people like asians across the world essentially but who are also doing this like podcasting route to get out their stories and like share other people's stories and it's really cool to like see that be part of it and like learn from each other so thanks jerry Wan, if you're listening <laughs> started that network <laughs> no no I, I i really agree with you i feel like at the beginning when i started this my reference for podcasts i basically listened to two podcasts i listened to food for thought and i listened to nancy so my reference for podcasts that were like queer and asian was just nancy and i was like oh like i don't really know if there is a community of people as you said who would be interested in listening to this stuff and what was really cool is like what we found and i think what you'll find in general is like when you search for a community you'll typically find Mm -hmm. it and that's what was the most surprising thing as you mentioned which is that like we thought we might be putting out something obviously not completely unique there's no way (laughs) right but like we thought we were going to be putting out something that was like relatively niche. And then when we popped into the niche, we were like, oh, wow, there's like a yeah. lot of people here already like doing their business, telling their life experience. And so it was like really cool to cross over, as you mentioned, with a lot of those people and share that experience. Yeah. yeah and I really liked our recent episode with Maggie um, for the to celebrate Indigenous Peoples Day, because I like that even though this the mission of our podcast started as like, you know, our struggle of the Asian American mm-hmm. identities, you know, balancing the two, the premise of our thing is like, but where are you really from, right? Like what, you know, that mm-hmm. general struggle to figure out like, who am I? And like, what are these different like battling factors within me that kind of determine who I am? And so I like that there's, it gives us this ability to also like branch out beyond necessarily the Asian American community to also Mm -hmm. help shine a light on like other communities stories too, which are also relatable also because we are just all human. Yeah. Yeah. There's that. Yeah. A hundred percent. It's definitely the case where I feel like in discussing like other people's past to finding their identity, like how they, figured out their way through their lives and their own experiences it helps to throw some relief on like your own experience and whether it's you know something where you can be like oh it's like completely relatable and like I see myself in that or it's something in like complete contrast where you're like that's such a like completely interesting thing and I never thought about this kind of experience like that before Mm -hmm. so I think it's been very Valuable shout out. Thank you to all of the guests who joined us. They've all been fantastic and brought totally different viewpoints and experiences and stories. So Mm -hmm. agreed. Yeah. All right. So lots of things to still be grateful for during this unprecedented time that we live in. Um, Let's travel back in time a little bit then to us in our childhoods or growing up by, you know, being raised by our Asian parents uh, as we move into the closing section, our fortune cookie sweet treat uh, to tie things back to our podcast theme. We thought it'd be fun to talk about things that we are grateful for that our Asian upbringings taught us. I'm very grateful for the level of independence that the kind of pressures I received from my parents and growing up Asian has impressed upon me. And this has, I mean, obviously, like, this has led me to so many great things. 
and great places. So I can't say enough like how important this was to me, even though along the way there were many tears, many breakdowns, like days where I was like, I cannot do this. Did I tell you I like quote unquote ran away from home for like half a day because of it? Like I just I I like got a really bad grade on mm. something and I just freaked out and I was like, I cannot talk to my parents. I can't do anything. I like ran away to like Barnes and Noble for like half day and didn't tell anyone where I was and I was just sitting there like reading reading something. <laughs> well, what was your most most grateful thing growing up Asian? I'm actually most grateful for even though we talk about this dual identity as a really frustrating mm-hmm. thing, I'm honestly most grateful for being dual identity like having these dual identities because i've now as an adult like i have friends who have been, grown up in the u.s and like have never left the u.s or it's like only in the past few years have they like gone to their first country outside of the mm-hmm. u.s and i feel like because we grew up in these two worlds and our parents still cared about going back to Taiwan. Like for me, I went back every three years until I was 18. So I like a good amount of exposure to that world. And like my dad also had a company in China. So we also went to China and like being able to see that the world is bigger than the little suburban bubble that we grew up in, in Orange County, like must have shaped the way that I see the world, like what's considered fair, what's considered like a good life and like all these things that I learned early because I was part of these two worlds as opposed to like people who've only grown up here and like haven't, aren't well traveled, like don't know what it's like outside of the US. It's like, it's a different kind of way that you look at life and the things that you were grateful for and like the opportunities that you have and how that relates to everyone else across the planet that don't have it as good or like you don't know what you're missing in terms of like the beauty of like other cultures that you could be embracing if you like stepped outside your your comfort zone so i'm grateful for that like very early introduction into our lives of like the world is bigger than this little place you're in right now so that's like made it not as weird to want to like see the rest of the world which i've done a lot of you know pre-covid so yeah just uh bittersweet but grateful for being dual identity awesome that's beautiful Thank you. Well, obviously, since it's the day after Thanksgiving, we hope everyone had really nice Thanksgiving. If you don't celebrate Thanksgiving, some kind of meal, holiday meal. Hopefully you're staying at home and not fighting people over sweaters at Black Friday. I don't think that's a thing this year. You can fight on the internet. Yeah. Why don't you email us the things you both hated about 2020 and the things you're most grateful for this year or any time. We'd love to hear from you. And as you know, we're just forever collecting listener stories for our next listeners episode. So just write us in on whatever you want to share. Um, one new plug actually that I want to drop in there is, as you know, our signature Zaijian Bitches <laughs> is our <laughs> send off in every episode. And we have made some merch that you can rock with some side gen bitches on it um if you want to take a look you can go to our website but where are you really from podcast.com you can find our stuff there and you can also find it on etsy if you type in side gen bitches into the search bar because no one else has that shit but us it's so, it's very tastefully yeah. and sassily cute yeah. That's right. That's Mm -hmm. right. Take a look. Let us know what you think. Um, And come back next week because we'll have a fresh new episode. We have new apps until the new year where we'll then take another little break. But until then, just keep coming back. We got more shit for you. And until next week. Zai Jin, bitches. bitches.